Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I uh, wish to address Parliament on the issue of the University of the South Pacific um, saga that's been going on for some time and clear up with facts and figures um, some of the issues pertaining to the University of the, of the South Pacific. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, despite significant abstentions and opposition in the Council, the USB Council Exec Special Executive Committee has approved and signed a three-year contract for Professor Paul Alwalia, who I will refer to as the former VC. Mr. Speaker, sir, they've appointed him as they've appointed him, Mr. Speaker, sir, as the Vice Chancellor and President of the University of the South Pacific to be based in Samoa. Mr. Speaker, sir, this is an illegal appointment. We see this for what it is a backward and divisive step that goes against the interests of students, governments, and regional goodwill. And it signals a concerning complacency with a record of mismanagement, nepotism, cronyism, poor financial accountability, and in some instances, Mr. Speaker, sir, outright fraud by the former VC that risks staining the USP's legacy. The former VC's desperate bids... Order, order. The former VC's desperate bids, Mr. Speaker, sir, I, I wish also if I could speak in intelligence to finish my speech because there's a lot of information here and obviously a lot of tripe from the other side. The former VC's desperate bids to drum up media attention, frame himself as a victim and curry favor with the public have deeply divided the region and there's no questioning about that. His one main crusade for the sake of his ego and career has cost the institution dearly. It has cost staff and students dearly. In only two years, in under two years, Mr. Speaker, sir, in his charge, 50 years of achievements have been put into dire jeopardy. And Fiji was not alone in opposing his reappointment for good reasons. The former VC, since his appointment in January 2019 as the Vice Chancellor and President of USP, has demonstrated a singular focus on his own public relations campaigning at the expense of good governance of the institution and the students he was meant to serve. And he has unfortunately been empowered by the abject failure of the council to adhere to its own statutes, rules and procedures, as well as the established principles of good governance and transparency. The council's attention has been drawn several times to the processes set up in the USP statutes on the appointment of a vice chancellor, which Fiji insists the council must adhere to. We have specific issues with that process, which we'll cover shortly. But first, Mr. Speaker, sir, it is important to review why Fiji has supported and continues to support and demand full accountability of the former VC's record of mismanagement at USP. It's clearly spelled out in the reports by the Chair of the Council and the Chair of the Audit and Risk Committee. These are not opinions, Mr. Speaker, sir. They represent an objective and impartial review of the former VC's actions. His shameless disregard for the rules and regulations even predates his appointment. Prior to his appointment as Vice Chancellor on 1st January 2019, in an appalling preview of what was to come, he intervened in the appointments of staff, particularly in the case of his close friend and supporter, Dr. Gurmeet Singh who was appointed as Professor of Management despite not meeting the requirements of a professor. The minimum qualifications, experience and research requirements are clearly stated in the academic classification document and the internal requirements that the university had set which was used to assess other candidates. And that's an assessment that Honorable Prasad would have gone through too. On 6 March 2019, the former VC presented to the university's executive committee a 11-page document making serious allegations of mismanagement by his predecessor, Professor Rajesh Chandra, several members of his senior management team, and some other senior staff. This document, ironically, Mr. Speaker, sir, was prepared by Professor Arvind Patel, head of accounting at USP, which the former VC later admitted in one of his council meetings. As stated below, Mr. Speaker, sir, and I'll talk about it later, in return, Arvind Patel was paid heavy consultancy money by the former VC breaching financial policies. 
His omission from the VC's allegations came under special mention by the much talked about BDO investigation report on what Kepo talks about, doesn't know anything about it. This 11 page document was mysteriously leaked in social media, and none of the people accused in the report ever got a chance to put their side of the story. None of them were even given natural justice. And Mr. Speaker, sir, that's precisely the reason why BDO report was not released, because it could have actually had civil suits against the University of the South Pacific. On April, on April Order. 17, Order. the director, Honorable Rondondo, please listen. On, on April 17th, the director of assurance and compliance handed the 11-page document to FICEC, completely acting beyond her level of authority in defiance of the instructions from the executive committee. FICEC, of course, cleared the document after looking at it for two months and did not find any case of fraud. In considering the 11-page report, the USB Council decided to have the 19 allegations in the report independently investigated, and BDO New Zealand from Auckland was engaged through a tender process. Subsequently, the BDO report stated that the then VC, Professor Rajesh Chandra, was within his powers to make the decisions. The report also highlighted that outdated and unclear policies left a number of areas which were not well defined and recommended that these need to be revised and better aligned. A commission was set up by the Council, which reported in January of this year. And in fact, in the prelude to the commission, the former Prime Minister of Cook Islands, who is now the General Secretary of the Forum Secretariat, the new Prime Minister of Samoa, and I were in the group that actually was involved in the setting up of the commission. The commission, which reported in January this year, and whose recommendations to strengthen policy and procedures are now being implemented by the Council. Ever since the appointment of Vice Chancellor in 2019, serious allegations have been made against the former VC on mismanagement and failure to adhere to principles of good governance, established rules, and procedures of USP. These include two reports from the Pro Chancellor, Winston Thompson, former Ambassador of Fiji, who nobody found any fault with until this gentleman came along, and three from the chairman of the USP's Audit and Risk Committee. The contents, if independently investigated, could have led to dismissal not only of the former VC, but some of the senior management team of USP. Some examples include the post-retirement appointment of Dr. Morgan Tuimale Lifano. Despite breaching requirements and regulations as stated in an Ernst and Young audit report, the renewal of the contract for the director assurance and compliance was being pushed by the former VC despite his conflict of interest and due process was completely contravened as stated again in the Ernst and Young audit report. Despite this report, the former VC granted her a 12-month contract. Also, while due process was followed by a dean to appoint a head of school, his appointment was refused by the former VC simply because the recommended person was not his supporter. They do not bow to the cult of personality he was looking to build, so they were refused. The deputy vice chancellor at regional campuses was appointed by the former VC when the position was not advertised and without issuing a contract. The former VC usurped the authority of the council. Only council is the authority to appoint the deputy vice chancellor. This is one of the seven breaches found in the KPMG investigation. The council, by sweeping the KPMG report under the carpet, clearly accepts that the former VC can usurp the powers of the council and operate unhindered. Section eight of the statutes, Mr. Speaker says, regarding deputy vice chancellors, Clause 3, our Deputy Vice Chancellor shall be appointed by the Council on the recommendation of a joint committee of the Council and Senate to be established by the Council. The position shall be advertised internationally. In March of 2019, the Executive Committee of Council approved the creation of the position of Deputy Vice Chancellor as per Clause 1 of Section 8. The Council should determine from time to time the number of Deputy Vice Chancellors of the University. At that time, the University had two Deputy Vice Chancellors, DVC Education and DVC Research. This was the third position that was created by redesignating the position of Vice President. Appointment to this position must follow the procedure in Clause 3, Mr. Speaker, sir, 
At that time, the incumbent, who was vice president, the regional campuses, estates and infrastructure, was announced by the former VC as DVC regional campuses. No due process was followed. And the Fijian Immigration Office has confirmed that his work permit, issued in, uh, on, in May of 2019 and ends on 26 May 2022, <coughs> is for vice president regional campuses. All USP official documents have the designation of deputy VC for this individual. This is fraud, to say the least. In breach of the processes, the former VC approved pension contribution to an expatriate staff and for funds to be transferred into his personal English bank account because he did not have any superannuation account overseas, nor was an FNPF member in Fiji at that time. The manager payroll at that time refused to do this because it was not right and not part of his contract. She, in fact, was later terminated by the acting VC, one of a number of local Fijians who have been terminated because they were not on the former VC's side. The former VC also appointed an expatriate to the position of Director of Human Resources in 2019 when this person did not meet the minimum requirement of holding a master's degree qualification. In breach of the established processes, in breach of the established processes, the former VC appointed this person, who happened to be Mr. Speaker, have worked with him in his previous employment. This is a breach in the provision of MQR for appointment of directors. This individual had a certificate in workplace assessor and trainer and a certificate for in human resources management personal administration, not even a bachelor's degree. She was an so. annual salary of $280,000 a year. When this became widely known, she fled the country without resigning or telling anyone except, of course, the former VC. Furthermore, in financial rules and policies, furthermore, in financial rules and policies, the former VC approved large sums of consultancy payments to Professor Arvind Patel without original documents being submitted. This is tantamount to fraud. However, the Director of Audit and Risk at USP, who supports the former VC, has taken no action to investigate further. The former VC approved annual leave payment for staff moving from one contract to another or within the same contract. While staff are entitled to carry forward 50% of the leave entitlements, there is no provision for leave payment, leave payment of ca uh, cash for such staff. He did this selectively for his supporters and payment to one individual is over $60,000. The total of these payout exceeded $400,000 in 2019. Late last year, the former VC approved the advertisement of three senior positions externally and one internally, Mr. Speaker, sir, appointing the spouse of this close friend to the position. Her name is Rajni Chand. This position, Mr. Speaker, sir, was in, advertised only internally, when we say internally, within USP, when there's a requirement to advertise it externally, you don't outside know. USP. You don't know Mr. what I'm talking about. Oh, 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 oh. Honorable oh. Prasad is speaking a lot because that is his spouse, Mr. Speaker, oh. sir. Yeah, Mr. Know. Speaker, sir, oh, and she did that. not meet oh. the MQR. Oh. Mr. Speaker, sir, all senior oh. positions oh. of the oh. university oh. All senior positions of the right. university are required to be advertised externally as per the university's recruitment policy. One basic requirement was not even met for this position, whereas the others were advertised externally. The former VC, Mr. Speaker, sir, had the tendency to ignore reporting to his employer, the council, through he the did, chair, Winston Thompson, and this formed the basis of the pro-chancellor's press statement in 2020. The matters ignored, included ignoring input from the council and its committees and presenting USP plans to the USP's grants committee, ignoring the council and its committees in dealing with Fiji Higher Education Commission, and undertaking reorganization of the USP without first advising the council's committees. All these matters are of utmost importance to the future strategic operation of USP. Yet the former VC chose to operate on his own whims. And yet he claims, supported by his cronies, on the council to be the champion of good governance. Mr. Speaker, sir, I just want to 
you know, juxtapose that and compare it to what happened previously. At the end of 2018, before this vice chancellor came onto the scene, former vice chancellor, the university had 27 international accreditations. The university also secured the Senior College and University Commission accreditation, which is a whole institution accreditation. When Professor Rajesh Chandra joined in 2010, the university did not have any international accreditations. None whatsoever. And within that time till 2018, Mr. Speaker, sir, he got this international accreditations 27. And here we had the following year after he left being crucified. Similarly, the chair of the Audit and Risk Committee, auditor in New Zealand for I think nearly 30 years, again, none of the reports been considered. And the reason why the chair of the Audit and Risk Committee report directly to the council is because it maintains independence. Yeah. On numerous occasions, Fiji has consistently demanded that the council must carry out an independent investigation on all the allegations brought to the council by the chair of the council and the chair of the Audit and Risk Committee, including some of those mentioned, as I've mentioned. Indeed, a number of these allegations made against the former VC warrant further investigation for alleged breach of criminal and anti-corruption laws. However, the council has blatantly refused to have these allegations investigated independently, choosing itself to dismiss the allegations without scrutinizing the evidence that has been advanced. These are not the Fijian government's opinions, Mr. Speaker, sir. They are independently documented instances of mismanagement. Mr. Speaker, sir, we believe that this must be adhered to because we as a government believe in accountability of public finances. That's a fundamental value we have. There must be good governance. This is why we set up FICAC, Mr. Speaker, sir. We value these principles must be adhered to in a practical sense. We know the opposition does not value this. They may state it, but for them, everything is about political expediency. That's fundamentally the difference between us and the other side. And talking about values, Mr. Speaker, sir, after the incident with Dr. Reddy, my own minister yesterday, Honorable Tambuya asked him to withdraw, which he did. We pointed out that he said that, maybe in a moment of, you know, um, angst. He withdrew that. Here we have Honorable Tambuya putting up a post. This is what Fiji First Ministers have to offer. Women are being attacked because of what they wear or who they hug. Mr. Speaker, sir, this is the kind of deceptive and obfuscation that's taking place. And this demonstrates more importantly, Mr. Speaker, sir, that the opposition is simply concerned about votes, simply about appealing to people and how quickly they can get popular. Don't worry about the values and principles. Honorable Prasad, Mr. Speaker, sir, on this parliament, on the floor of this parliament, has said that in politics everything goes. He said this, I remember a few years ago. We said there must be standards and values and principles. There are certain no, rules. You're stretching Mr. Speaker, it too sir. far. I don't, oh, Mr. Speaker, sir, what I said. on 23rd September 2020, 11 months ago, the Fijian government raised concerns on the continuous lack of adherence to the principles of good governance and put on notice that all grants will be stopped. The president of Nauru, who was then the chancellor of USP, proposed that he and some other country members will approach the Fijian government on this matter in order to resolve it. However, no action was taken. We are still waiting. The Pacific Way has not taken place. Despite an announcement that Fiji's decision to withhold grant funding has caused more severe cash flow problems at USP. Of course, then, the former vice chancellor got into, and we've never seen before, at the USP's campus history, 50-year history, he went and was holding rallies with students. Students can hold rallies. That's their right. University areas, they can do that. We all have done that. But here is a vice chancellor for his own personal agenda to try and hide beside, behind this facade was riling up all the students. The opposition was getting swept up with it. Those in this parliament, outside this parliament, all to basically hide this fraud. Indeed, it appears that mismanagement is now deeply rooted within USP. In this regard, we are extremely concerned to hear recent reports that despite the termination of the contract of the, of the former vice chancellor and the acceptance of the termination, 
by the Council on Legal Advice, Independent Legal Advice, USP had continued to pay the former VC his salary without terminating other Fijian staff on contestable grounds, while terminating, while terminating other Fijian staff on contestable grounds and unjustly holding back on their salaries and adjustments and entitlements. So the time when his contract was deemed to be terminated and from what they have done, purported re reappointment, yes, pay the in that period they still paid him. This is yet another example of gross impropriety at USP, which must be condemned and independently investigated. It is clear that some members of council authorized this payment without a formal resolution in a council meeting. That is beyond unprofessional. It is deeply unethical and constitutes a misuse of public funds. Fiji has asked USP management for an explanation on this. We have heard nothing in response, Mr. Speaker, sir. And while they were mum on the, on the misuse of public funds, Mr. Speaker, sir, we did receive quite a shocking answer to a paper by the Chair of Audit Risk Committee on mistreatment of other Fijian staff, while the council dismissed as a management matter. Yes, we agree. So why aren't they doing anything about the management behind the matter, Mr. Speaker, sir? That is a question. Mr. Speaker, sir, just very quickly to put into perspective, in 2019, these are the countries that contribute as member grant uh, contributions. Cook Islands, $182,000, 0.48%. Fiji, $26.6 million, 70.85% of contributions. Marshall Islands, 0.81%, 304,000. Kiribati, 2.67%, which equates to about $1 million. Nauru, 0.35%, $130,000. Newey, 0.14%, $53,000. Samoa, 4%, $1.5 million. Solomon Islands, 8.96%, $3.36 million. Tokelau, 0.15%, $54,000. Tonga, 3.46%, $1.3 million. Tuvalu, 1.33%, $499,000. Vanuatu, 6.7%, $2.5 million. Mr. Speaker, sir, this is apart. This is apart from the fees that the Fijian government pays by way of tells and toppers. And as I highlighted yesterday, it's been in excess of about $130 million since 2014. Mr. Speaker, sir, the former VC's contract was terminated on 4th February 2021 following breaches of his work permit conditions in accordance with the law in terms of his contract of employment with USP. The contract was personally reviewed and signed by the former US, uh, VC when he took the position of Vice Chancellor. The position of Vice Chancellor subsequently became vacant as confirmed by independent legal advice provided to USP by the university's lawyers, which we understand is Monroe Lee's. The legal advice also confirmed that the former VC was not entitled to prior notice of any breach of his work permit. And without a contract, the former VC no longer held office as Vice Chancellor. Mr. Speaker, sir, section, section 7 of USP statute says, Clause 3, the Vice Chancellor shall be appointed by the Council on the recommendation of a joint committee of Council and the Senate to be established by the Council. The position shall be advertised internationally. It has been Fiji's position, Mr. Speaker, sir, that Council respects the statutes and appoints a Vice Chancellor under these provisions. Anything outside this is clearly illegal. Mr. Speaker, sir, in fact, we did say that if his contract terminated, you advertise internationally his full right to reapply, but go through the process. He may have, he can apply, he may still get appointed, but go through the process. We are all concerned at the lack of fiduciary duty and complete disregard for the Council's code of conduct by some members of the Council who declared no conflict of interest, though they had publicly through media statements stated that, and I quote, Alwalia is still the VC of the USP. And I quote, USP is a regional institution and therefore the VCP can operate out of Samoa, Vanuatu, or Nauru, any other country, unquote. Well before the council's deliberation on the former VC's reappointment. After going on record and preempting the council's decision, they should have recused themselves from the process entirely. Instead, 
They mixed their personal sentiments and credibility into what everyone expected to be an objective process. We also note that no conflict of interest was declared by the chairperson of a special executive committee looking into the 33 allegations raised by the chair of the Audit Risk Committee that she had been a colleague of the former VC until prompted by another member. Another special executive committee looking into the alleged code of conduct of the uh, alleged code of conduct breach of the pro-chancellor and the chair of ARC is chaired by the deputy pro-chancellor. Why is that a problem? Because there's a direct beneficiary from decisions made. So you have the deputy pro-chancellor investigating the pro-chancellor. So if the pro-chancellor is removed, the deputy pro-chancellor who's investigating him because, becomes the pro-chancellor. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The council had also decided that Alwalia will be based in Samoa after his purported reappointment. Samoa's decision to host Alwalia Good. was taken with utter disregard of the principal position taken by Fiji to demand good governance and transparency. While the amended USP charter does not tie the location of the vice chancellor to USP, the independent legal advice provided to the council clearly states that the location of the vice chancellor must be consistent with his or her role as the chief, as the chief academic and administrative officer and the, and the vice chancellor and president of the USP. And the location must be such as would enable him or her to fulfill that role. The independent legal advice to the council states that the location of the vice chancellor outside Fiji may also have implications on the ordinances, regulations and policies, as well as funding arrangements. This will affect the benefits that USP has been privileged. This will affect the benefits the USP has been privileged through Fiji's bilateral funding over the past 53 years. The Vice Chancellor's Office has a complete set of administrative support. Historically, the Vice Chancellor has always been located in Fiji, and as the host country, Fiji has provided the facilities for the Vice Chancellor's Today. Office. With the Vice Chancellor located in Samoa, it should now be the responsibility of the Samoan government to host his office. Mr. Speaker, sir, over the past few months, the Council has taken every opportunity it could to discredit the work done by the Chair of the Council, Winston Thompson, and the Chair of the Audit and Risk Committee. Based on complaints by whistleblowers at USP, as required by the terms of reference of the Audit and Risk Committee, an investigation was requested to be carried out by KPMG, which found at least seven instances where the former VC had seriously breached the authority of the Vice-Chancellor. Despite this, Council disregarded this report and has referred the Chair of the Audit and Risk Committee in turn to an Ethics Committee for Breach of Code of Conduct for actually going ahead and doing this investigation. The report has been shelved without any consideration as it alludes to the former VC's shortcomings. The President of Nauru in the Council meeting in July this year proposed that regional members of Council get together, clearly disregarding Fiji, to work with the Vice-Chancellor, the former Vice-Chancellor and his senior management team to come up with strategies, I quote, to come up with strategies that would allow the university to operate without Fiji's grant. This committee would need to look at fees, grants, donors, and at the disproportionate Fiji influence on Council that is clearly not sustainable if they do not pay their grant, unquote. Such proposals show sheer disrespect and disregard to a sovereign nation. Nauru's contribution to USP is $127,000. Fiji's contribution last was $27 to $29 million. And five members from Fiji, uh, from Fiji on the council is clearly less than the contribution, far less than the contribution that Fiji makes. And as I mentioned, in addition to this, we paid in excess of $130 million by way of tells and toppers, apart from the private students. No other member country contributes anywhere near this. No other nation has the incentive that Fiji has to ensure that the grant funding to USP is disbursed in accordance with the principles of good governance. If you're contributing 75 to 80 percent of the grant funding, you obviously need to be mindful of how that money is spent. If you're contributing less than 1 percent, you don't really care. Fiji has been clear from the start that it yeah. will maintain its stance on good governance. Fiji has asked the Council to do the right thing and have all the allegations against the former VC brought to Council 
by the chair of council and the chair of the audit and risk committee and it be independently investigated. Despite at least six instances of breaches cited in the recent KPMG investigation report, Alwalia was given a new contract in what can only be viewed as a cover-up job, a devious attempt to cover up the breaches by the former VC uh -huh. by whose standards, by who we have been complicit in his mismanagement, if we adhere to him, go along with him. In a moment where accountability should have been the answer, this illegal appointment has plunged the USP back into needless drama and needless turmoil and, of course, political interference by the opposition. And for who, Mr. Speaker, sir? For one individual. One individual's career over the potential careers of tens of thousands of students and the viability of a revered regional institution. Not only the students of USP today, but those to come whose education will also be impacted by the wanton disregard for due process, transparency and accountability and the huge politicization yeah, of this issue. The problem with the opposition is anything that goes against government, they join the bandwagon, irrespective of the values and principles. Mr. Speaker, sir, given the gravity of the allegations of serious mismanagement against the former VC, Fiji, as the largest contributor to USP, reiterates that it will not, it will not make any contribution of grant funding to USP until such time when a new vice chancellor is appointed in accordance with the mandated transparent no recruitment process, and until such time as all the alleged breaches are investigated further independently. Fiji does not accept Alwalia as the vice chancellor and will not provide any funding or assistance to USP for as long as he remains the supposed vice chancellor. Mr. Speaker, sir, and the council is failing his duty to Order. independently investigate him. Order. Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Order. Speaker, sir. Order. Mr. Speaker, sir. The students, Mr. Speaker, sir, the students and staff, the students and staff, Mr. Speaker, sir. Order. Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Honorable Kepa obviously does not believe in good governance. She does not believe in accountability. Absolutely no principles and values, Mr. Speaker, sir. And Mr. Speaker, sir, given the fact that it's so highly politicized by the opposition, and given the fact that the council is not adhering to it, we are currently considering our options to recommend to the Honorable Prime Minister to have a commission of inquiry into the University of the South Pacific. Mr. Speaker, sir. Good. Mr. Speaker, sir, OLA is exactly what we said when we saw the lack of governance at USP. And Honorable Kappa obviously is not known for her strengths in that specific area. Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, in those concluding remarks, I, I, I finish my update on the USP Council. Thank you. USP.